Ja, herzlich willkommen zum Mission Safety Digital at A plus A. Heute so an diesem Nachmittag zum Messeauftakt der A plus A Messe hier aus Düsseldorf. Wir haben heute Vormittag schon ein paar äh, spannende Themen This morning mit dabei gehabt. Looked at some very interesting and exciting topics even. We got a bit of technical information. We heard from some experts. But first I'd like to, before we proceed, like to inform you that you can communicate with us directly with our QR code and for this you need of course a QR compatible mobile phone and um, alles weitere uh, Daumen hoch Applaus ihr könnt es gerne mal ausprobieren You can of course also communicate or use the same link for downloading information for applause or thumbs up or whatever and down below you see our central email address If you want to give us any suggestions ask any questions then feel free to go ahead but first I'm going to start with a small film Hello and herzlich willkommen. A warm welcome to this year's A plus A. Ja, und jetzt nochmal offiziell herzlich willkommen zum Yes, Mission so, and again, officially, a warm welcome to our next session. And we have a lot prepared for you today. Before we start, I'd like to say that we're going to use the do form of address in German. Um, so it's great that you're all here. Kim Pietz is my name. I work for Dräger for the region Germany as event manager. And today and tomorrow I'm going to conduct you through our live sessions. Now, before we start, a few organizational infos. We're working with a hygiene concept here, the 3G rule, which we call it in German. That means everybody here is either tested or vaccinated or recovered from the pandemic. And um, everybody outside is wearing a mask. Now, as I said, this morning we had some very exciting subjects and sessions. And those of you who are just logging in now for the first time, I want to go very briefly through what we have to offer, but first we're going to start with our friend Ingrid, in an artist in Berlin. Ingrid, for those of you who have just um, arrived, could you tell us what you are, what you do? Hello, Ingrid, Ingrid Wenzel is my name. I'm an illustrator. My speciality is that I accompany events and record them with my pens. And you see this morning we had this um, Freight for a booth, I threw a picture like this, and today I'm going to accompany this session too, and afterwards I'll show you some pictures I've been inspired to create from this session. Could you maybe show us um, a few of uh, pictures you made before. Well, in the last session, we were talking about demographic change in the society. And maybe you know this pyramid or this graphic we saw in school. Um, I always thought it looked like a face, two faces, actually. And the subject was, how can we support your personnel in this regard? What new challenges um, are brought to us by this demographic change? Uh, another issue was multilingual workforce and um, my idea, and I also heard that, I also learned because I didn't know before, that these um, suits create a lot of noise and the Draeger product creates significantly less noise, so that inspired me to that picture. And later I'm going to show you again what I have to um, the uh, pictures I was inspired to create. Okay, great, thank you, Ingrid. The event is Mission Safety Digital at A plus A, and of course we're going to have contributions from our trade for a booth. So first I'd like to welcome 
my colleagues Anneliese there and she's got a new uh, partner there, that's Oli. Great to see you both. Yes, great, we're looking forward to hearing from you again. Talk to you later. And here in the studio I've also got a very competent support. Those of you who are at the previous sessions will know him. But for the rest of you I'd like to introduce him again. This is uh, my friend Dennis and colleague. Dennis, could you tell us um, who you are, what you do, for all new participants. Well, Dennis Beisch is my name. I'm product marketing manager in the region Germany for light um, breathing protection and body protection. Good. Today we're talking about um, light breathing protection. You said that's your theme, so it's something very important for you. Yes, this is something that we, we've seen this, um, especially in the last year or two. We've seen the variability of the products, but also variability of the customers and uses, applications, where it can be used. You know, as I said before, like a hobby craftsman who maybe does something, works with wood at home or in the garage, he has to protect himself just the same as somebody who works in a major chemical uh, corporation working in the laboratory. You know, all of them can fall back on the same product portfolio, and that's what makes it very exciting for us. And anybody who uh, knows about A and A is aware that light breathing protection is a very, very important subject there. And um, you have a question I heard, you told me before, for our viewers. Yes, I'd like to know in what region, what kind of working area, what segment do you work in? Yes, exactly. You can send us this information. What segment of work do you operate in? That's the question. And the answers you send us by scanning this QR code and then just simply giving us the, your information. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and the results of this very, very fast and ad hoc survey. Aber vielleicht kann die Regie uns schon mal ein erstes Ergebnisbild geben, um, damit wir schon mal sehen. Maybe we can hear from our back office people what results we've got. Well, I see them here already. You know, work protection, fire brigade, trade, semiconductor industry, trade and commerce. You see, we have also comrades from the fire brigade, chemical industries, wholesale and retail. Yes, I think that just um, indicates what I was going to, what I was saying to you. You know, just a variety of applications, the variety of our customer portfolio or potential customers, interested parties. Practically everybody is there when you look at pharmaceuticals, technical. You know, um, so many people from a wide range of sectors have personal contact to this portfolio. So that's a very interesting thing. Another question, very briefly, is what um, work in your company do you use breathing protection for? So mouth protection, nose protection for breathing protection. What work do you use these um, protective devices for. Maybe if uh, a lot of fire brigade people are here, I can imagine really what their answers are already, but let's just wait and see what they give us by way of feedback. Okay, I see we're getting a word cloud. There are not so many at the moment. Yes, clean room technology, dust free, grinding chemical, sales, firefighting, working with wastewater and sewage. You know, this just again gives us uh, the same pictures we had before. And I think the more we wait, the more terms are going to pop up there. And just this pure range of the variety of areas of application. And you can see the kind of um, hazardous substances that people are exposed to, like fire brigade, gas pipes, water, sewage. 
dass uh, diese Vielseitigkeit, ich kann immer And uh, people in the rescue services, you know, there's just a very, very wide range of users, very wide range of applications, and that, as I said before, is the challenge that now faces us. Okay, I don't want to uh, overtax you, but we have a third question for you. And my question now is, what products do you use most frequently? What products do you use most frequently? Again, please, your feedback in response to this question, what products do you use most frequently through this QR code on your mobile phone? <laughs> I presume that the FFP mask, yes, just as I see, I'm right, you know, that definitely is the, the winner, but in the end, like, in a, because people in their daily lives outside and social lives they use the FFP masks, maybe in a working environment it's different. We see here full masks, we see here powered filter devices, that's like air-powered filter devices and protective suits. The protective suits, we saw them today when we went on our tour and also in the demographic change, we saw these suits, so very interesting. Um, you can also use the chat, of course, for um, giving us your remarks, comments, suggestions, questions. And um, now I'd like to go over to Olli and Lisa at the booth just so to hear what they have to say about the mood yeah, down there. Yes, that's my point of action. Thank you, Kim and Ennis, for the very, very charming introduction. Oli and I were at the booth in the A plus A in this love, um, that's Hall A6, Oh five. Now, those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Anneliese, and it's my great honor to um, keep you abreast of all that's changing and happening here at our booth. And now we have Oli, who's uh, responsible for light breathing protection. Hello, Oliver Steinman is my name. I'm marketing manager in Drega, and my main focus is industrial breathing protection. Industrial breathing protection, that sounds for me a little bit complex and maybe a little bit Gray, if I may so, but I'd like to ask you, what fascinates you with the subject? Well, I think, um, well, you know, I first of all have to say that I've been in this area for a long, long time, many, many years. And I think it's very interesting that you can um, uh, show to customers that there are many big differences in these products. A lot of people think all these products are the same. But uh, I think my job is to show that we've made innovations, developments, and the products are not all the same. And there are vast ranges of differences in quality. Okay, now um, we're going to go back, or we got information from the studio where they um, gave us feedback from the customers about the wide range of varieties and customers who are interested and the kind of products to use. Is that also what you've experienced? Exactly, that's exactly what I've experienced in my life. And, oh, by the way, it's also a cross-section of the people who are visiting us today. Like everything we do is always geared towards a wide range of applications, the perfect solutions for our customers. Okay, the perfect solution in the form of products. We're going to talk about that later in more detail. At the moment, it's quite full. So let's uh, switch back now to the studio and hear, learn more about this subject of light breathing protection. Thank you very much for the two of you down there at the booth. Your first statement, we're going to switch back to you shortly. But first, let's look at a bit of uh, the theory or the information behind this subject of light breathing protection. How is that defined? Well, how is it defined? You know, is your good question because there isn't really any uh, established definition of what um, breathing protection is. Um, I'll show you what we um, understand. It's particle filtering, half masks, half masks against particles, gases, and steams, full masks. And then you can see on the right, because of the spectrum of the uh, we have here, we want to include all of these in our product range. And what trends have we recognized in this area? Well, Oli already indicated it. The trend is towards greater comfort. We want to make the work that anybody has to perform in his daily life 
as easy as possible and facilitate him and his operations as easily as possible. That means we have to have a good uh, filtering, but also good fit and ease of breathing. And we try to establish a good balance with little low um, breathing resistance and high comfort. And that is the challenge. You know, with so many customers, so many applications we have to serve, that we um, get a po portfolio that's exactly right and adequate for this range of demand. What would do you think would uh, criteria do you have to apply when choosing the correct breathing protection? Well, there are many exclusion criteria. We've got them here in front of us. First of all, is filtering aid uh, breathing protection. That means we need a specific uh, quantity of um, oxygen in our environment. In Germany, that's 70 percent. And then the type and concentration of the hazardous substance has to be known. You have to go through these 26 tests um, to find out if there are any medical issues about that and um, it must also be um, announced that um, breathing protection is in place here. And how did you manage all this? Well, the question is, we have um, a database called Draeger Voice. You can simply enter your the hazardous substance that you're concerned about, and then the voice will make a proposal to you, like within the area of um, the protection uh, protection equipment, what products and service can we provide to you from Draeger to you to help you combat this hazard? And I presume the uh, information is on our website. Yes, of course, so you can simply look in every search engine, Draeger Voice, and you'll find out more about it. Question, have you any concrete example of this voice? Yes, I picked out NH3. That's uh, water-soluble ammoniac, and if you um, enter that with the mask, it comes to the um, range of 3,500, 3,800. That's the range of products, and the voice will propose then the filter that I will need to filter this hazardous substance and protect your workers against it. Okay, that sounds very interesting, just getting the exactly uh, right filter, most appropriate for you. But now I'd like to switch back to uh, Lisa and Oli and find out what they have to say about the report from the trade for a booth. Yes, we have a lot to show you. Oli is going to show you the first um, highlight of this trade fair, and we're standing actually right in front of it. So, Oli. Well, I want to show you, first of all, my favorite. That's FFP mask um, from the 900 series. And there's some points here that are not trivial. And they really make the distinction here. And first of all, it's the filter material. And that shows a clear distinction in terms of quality, but also wearing comfort. Because this, um, you know, there's only always a very narrow line between protection and low uh, strain on the wearer. Then only in that way can I give us make a satisfactory product for the user. But of course, the best filter material is no use to you if it doesn't fit perfectly on your face. And if you look at my face and your face, I think we can see quite significant difference in shapes of faces. And for this mask, the 906 mask, it's no problem because of this three part design shows that the mask will perfectly adapt to the features of the face and dimensions of the face. And secondly, this mask is available in all uh, protect level, protection levels in two different sizes, and that just helps you get exactly the right fit for your face. And uh, we also talked about handling, and especially these textile-coated um, bands like loops, which go all the harness, goes all the way around the head. It makes it very, very easy to use, easy to take off and let. You can leave it hanging in front of you, put it back on again when you need it. You know, I was able to, I had an opportunity of trying it out, and I must say it's very, very pleasant to try out. But of course, um, 
There are many uh, masks at this um, trade fair today. What's special about that? Well, that's difficult to answer that question because, of course, it depends on whatever you're comparing it to. I can only say just simply try it out. You're going to see the difference immediately. And that's why I invite you all to contact us, to take this opportunity to reach us in whatever way, and we can arrange a test, and then you'll find out what quality is in this simple mask. Now, quality, that's a nice a way of moving on to the next um, section. First of all, I'd like to say that customers can take out the sample box, get it here, try it out at home or in the workplace later. But of course, quality also makes certain features um, tangible. What are they? Yes, we talked before about certain factors that are very important, comfort, breathing, resistance, but ultimately it's um, there are always certain basic issues have to be clarified. And first is certification. And in Corona times, there were certain black sheep in the market, uh, I have to say. So that's why anybody who's interested in this subject, FFP, they have to know what information is on the mask and what it means regarding the certification, the manufacturer, and the test institute that is um, examined it. So we see the manufacturer's name, the uh, test standard, uh, that's the current version, and behind that we see a four-digit number. In our case, that relates to our test institute that we work with, that's DECLA. Okay, great, so that's just one way of um, identifying a good mask. Now, of course, FFP isn't the only thing that we can offer in the subject of light breathing protection. If we walk around this stand, we see the category of half masks. What are they? Well, actually, the situation is that with these particle masks, masks, these are suitable for, obviously, for applications where particles have to be filtered out. They could be gases, steams, or whatever in the air that have to be filtered out, and you need a special technology for that. And that's um, realized of these half masks here, which have a combination filter that uh, has a much wider range of applications than the simple masks. What about air resistance here? Is it um, difficult, more difficult to breathe here, or did we take that into account? Well, we see down across here, we have a cross-section of the filter. And you see there's a lot of technology and competence in that because with the increased surface which was created by this folding technology, we reduce the breathing uh, load by one third. And when you're working with that every day, um, that's definitely a significant uh, reduction and improvement. Look at these things. They look very um, spacey, but of course masks aren't really only for looking good, they have a very uh, concrete function. What's, um, how good are they, especially in relation to the um, competi competitors? Well, design, people can talk about design, different opinions, but it regards function, there's really only one thing. You see this drop form ensures a perfect weight spread. You see on the side we have grip. Um, dense where you can very easily hold that when you've got even when you've got thick gloves on and the whole thing is um, far away from the face that you don't have any impairments directly on your skin now these masks are also marked with certain sizes we have M and L do you think, um, is that just for the proper fit or what's that for, these differences? Well, we have to find out what masks are um, right for your face. And that's also very true for these half masks. Uh, for me, the very important um, aspect is training. People have to be instructed how to handle, how to hold, how to operate and wear these masks. But then, apart from that, there's a fit test where the tightness and proper sealing of the mask on the face can also be tested. And um, Draeger 
provides the service just to allow you to ensure that your mask is sitting perfectly on your face. Great, thank you for that great uh, introduction. If um, you as viewers have any uh, questions or suggestions, then please through the, um, you can uh, uh, chat to us through the chat function, or of course you can take part in this fit test that we just heard about. Great, thank you very much. Now, um, we have a few questions from the chat. So, Nela, let's have a look at that. So, the first one is, where can I buy this mask? Well, we have to differentiate because we've seen two different types now the P masks and the half masks. The FFP masks and the half masks can be purchased through our normal dealers that you normally work with as customer. And also on our website, you can see where to find the dealer in your particular region close to you. The products can also be bought through uh, Amazon from us and uh, the FFP. We also have a special FFP shop online where you can um, draw your supplies. Great, thank you. What about the design of the mask? Oli mentioned that a little bit, but well, we're talking about personal protection equipment, and for a lot of people, uh, it's a bit of a handicap because you've got additional, let's say, challenge or task in your normal work. It's not like us the way we can talk freely. Like people have to wear this during their work, sometimes difficult work. So very important for us is the acceptance of the wear, and we achieve this through function and uh, ease of breathing, of course, but also because of the design. We know that from many, many other areas that when the design is good and people can identify with it, then the acceptance will be higher. The probability uh, that the user is going to wear it is also higher. That gives um, protection for everybody. Question, uh, what are the different uh, sizes in the FFP masks? Well, Oli mentioned that in the 900 we've got, uh, 1900 we've got two different sizes. We've also different uh, types and in each type there are also different sizes. And um, all the different forms have various sizes. Last question. What about um, people who have beards when you're fitting the mask? Well, fitting the mask can be a bit difficult for um, people with beards have difficulty trying testing these masks and getting the right mask. So when we're doing the proper test, uh, where it really should be um, shaved. So uh, there's no way of testing these three variations when the person is wearing a beard, but you'll see later that we have got certain solutions for that too. Great, so that uh, stays interesting. Now you see that we're getting a lot of questions and a lot of feedback and we're answering them too. We're going to continue, first of all, uh, reaching the climax of our session in relation to um, light breathing protection. Are there any innovations? Maybe some people uh, who've only just looked in uh, and tuned in to see us, they maybe won't be aware of them. Okay, for those people, we have a brief video prepared, so let's go. Although the ones who were here this morning, they've probably seen this.
Ich würde sagen, das war mal eine super spannende I would say that it was a very highlight auch für exciting video and that's also our highlight for this trade fair. That's the helmet portfolio for our um, part air filter device and the uh, airline device. You saw in various sequences there the different modalities that we've two different designs. First of all is the a helmet with a fold up visor. And then there's a helmet with um, the cap, and then you use that with a hood, so you're perfectly protected against contamination. And for the overall products, for all the products, we've got several uh, accessoires with various um, variations for fitting, for handling. And it was really interesting for me working with this portfolio. Any gossip now from the development? What challenges did you encounter when you were working on this? Well, I think it's uh, interesting here what we saw at the beginning and what you as um, viewers have given us, like telling us what you work with, what challenges you face. And so our assignment was quite clear. We want to make sure that every user um, has the opportunity to, to um, avail of the fruits of our research and development. Everybody from company uh, management, paint shops, hospitals, everybody, you know, that's a big challenge, of course, to cover this whole such a wide range because everyone has their own specific requirements and they all have different preferences. But I think with this range, we've really succeeded in covering this uh, area and especially with these powered air filter devices we have. If you were to describe these helmets in three um, concise keywords, what words would they be? Well, I'd say varied, variable, and robust, of course, we've just seen that in the video, and also ready for the future, so sustainable into the future. That's also very, very important. Okay, let's now go back to the booth and see what Annalisa and Olli have to tell us. Thanks again, Kim and Dennis. Now, it's interesting that you just um, you just end on where we're standing here, right beside these um, this helm portfolio. Olli, can you tell us um, how customers respond to this? Well, I think um, in Dennis's voice you can hear the enthusiasm. I'm also enthusiastic about this. Um, and this helmet portfolio uh, closes a certain gap in the market and um, I'm very happy to see that customers are equally responding to that in the same positive way. What is the fascination factor here? Well, if you look over this portfolio, you see, you get a, a small impression of the modularity that we're offering here. We have, first of all, the existing HUDs for maybe easier um, applications where breathing protection is most important. And then before uh, moving over here, we see also eye protection, side protection. And then going over, we have a helmet solution all the way to the helmet and hood and cover it down to the shoulders. So it's a wide range of um, demands and applications covered. How do you think, um, do you think this is our sales point compared to our competitors? Yes, I think that when you look at this, again, of course it's true that you don't need um, breathing protection all the time. Sometimes you're in a non-contaminated area and it has to be easy then to fold up the visor. You can see when you do that that your chin and your shoulders are still protected. That means you're not going to, by um, raising the visor, you're not going to let any materials or substances go from the visor into your face. So that's a major benefit. 
So we're showing this now for the first time and exclusively at this trade fair. What are you, what's your initial feedback? How do the customers respond to it? Well, you see that there's a lot happening around here, this little island. We very often have to um, make room because the demand is here, the interest is here. We've done the first um, fit tests and wearing tests with interested people. And that's why I'd like to... Um, I tell you today that if you're interested, you're, we're here till Friday, you can come before Friday to us and um, Lisa or I were going to show it to you. You can meet us either here or at your dealer or at the local dealer agent, will, uh, Drager agent will come around to show you this equipment. So I'd say we leave this uh, area now. Yes, we have to make uh, space. So um, there was uh, the helm. Helmet was very popular this morning, and uh, it's great that we had an opportunity of showing that to you now. But now we're going to ha hand it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Oli and Annalise. We're going to see you in the next session again, and we're looking forward to that already. So questions. I think we have a few questions from the chat. Let's see. Dennis, und dann schauen wir mal, ob du die beantworten kannst. Da bin ich mal gespannt. <lacht> die erste Frage ist, wie hoch ist äh, die maximale Tragedauer der... The first question is, um, how also high is the... Genau. Da muss man ganz klar unterscheiden. The wearing time. Um, how long can you wear it? Question, the, uh, the um, question is, what area do you work in? You know, it's a one-way product disposable. That means it can be used in a normal industrial context, but only for eight hours, like for one shift, and then has to be disposed of. Now, when we're talking about the pandemic context, and let's say airborne biological um, substances, which is the coronavirus, then the uh, specification is that after you've taken off, taken it off, it has to be disposed of. <laughs> That's just the there are the regulations. Now, question to the 8000 helm. When is that available? Well, from now. As Oli said, we're launching this together with this um, trade fair. Everything you see here is um, available. You can contact Drager, your dealer, or agent whatever, or look at the website to make an appointment for this um, portfolio to be presented and shown to you. Again, you can um, use the many contact channels we have or even our email address. I see here's another question coming in. Question, how often can I use this? It's about a full mask, yes. They're talking about full mask. How long, how often can I use this? Well, with full masks, there are some products which can be cleaned and disinfected like a half mask or a full mask, and some masks can't be, like in uh, FFP. You can't wash that or disinfect it. So a full mask can be used as often as possible, as long as the um, side test and the tightness test has been carried out beforehand. You know, um, if you see from the visual test that it's okay and then and the, that it makes a proper seal around the face, then of course it can be used forever. Okay, great. Now again, if you have any more chat questions, please send them in to us. Use the chat, that's what it's there for. We want to hear your opinions, your questions, your feedback. Now before we finish with this session, I'd like to switch over to uh, Ingrid again. Ingrid, I'm looking forward to your pictures from this session. I'm curious about what they could be. Hi, Kim and Dennis. Um, show you what I've, great, what I've created here. First is light uh, breathing protection. I was thinking about that before because um, <laughs> if you'd asked me two years ago what breathing protection is, I wouldn't have known, I couldn't have told you anything, but after almost two years of the pandemic, we all have a bit of experience with these masks. And um, you talked about 
variability and the range of applications in talking about in paint shops and car manufacturing and the health um, healthcare in the steel industry or hobby craftsmen or me traveling in the Berlin metro this morning. Um, we were talking also about uh, protection, of course, but also resistance, breathing resistance and comfort and the size. That's, of course, also very important. And um, the features. Yes, I drew a picture of this Explorer 8000. That's our innovation. I tried to present that in nice colors. Hold on, let's see if this comes over. And the fit test you mentioned. I had to say that, you know, I'm not really an expert in this area. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that entails. So I just did a very, very small mini fit test and I'm handing this back now to you. Okay, thank you, Ingrid. We'll see you later in the next session. Thank you very much and have fun with your creative work. Thank you. See you later. That was really great with you. Dennis, I'd like to um, thank you. This is now our last um, joint session. Anything you'd like to say to conclude? Well, I must say I'm delighted not just with the products that we've seen, but also with the variety of our products, like the way we think in Träger, the challenges we see, and um, this wide range of applications and demands. We tackle this and we've succeeded this, and we've written very, very strong on our to-do list that we want to make every customer as satisfied as possible individually. And we want to provide products with low uh, breathing resistance, great wearing comfort, attractive design, something for everybody to uh, meet the needs of all of our customer groups. Great, and if you want to talk to uh, Dennis, just just drop by. Uh, we're going to be here until the end of the week in Hall 6. Um, Dennis, I hope you've got a very successful trade fair for the rest of the week and thanks for coming around to our studio today. And I'd also like to point out a few things before we conclude today. At 3 o'clock the next session is starting, that's pandemic precaution. And then we're going to see Oli again, Dion will be there too, so in the meantime you can use the chat or central email address and we're looking forward to seeing you again at 3 o'clock. See you then. <laughs>